the show, a good spokesman. From Washington, D.C. is the co-chairman of Project 21, Horace Cooper. Horace, welcome back to the program. Well, thank you for having me on. Horace, let me ask you. Uh, I know you're a good friend, like I am, of Dr. Elvita King. She said that if her uncle were alive today and he saw the violence, he would be heartbreak, heartbroken. Should we be surprised by that? He would be heartbroken. This goes completely counter to the whole notion of the dream that he told us that we ought to as a nation embark upon. A dream where people were going to be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We are having a challenge over the last five to seven years with this idea, and it's, it's actually a little longer than that. I call it the Claudette Colvin syndrome, where we are rallying around these flawed individuals that do not and should not inspire us the way Martin Luther King did. Now, we just had on famed political pollster Scott Rasmussen, and he said that in some way, uh, because President Barack Obama happens to be someone of African-American descent, he believes that he represents hope in, uh, in uh, uh, a, a positive outlook for a lot of folks in the community who may have no hope in their lives, only despair. And that hope has not, has not materialized. And what we're seeing is perhaps frustration on that level. What's your take on that? Well, there is some frustration over the fact that the uh, aspirations that every American has uh, hasn't been achieved. It's not the case that it's okay to engage in these kinds of criminal actions as a result. But we also need to look at the president and the policies that he has promoted and watch and see why what people said when they were first being presented, those wouldn't work and they haven't and they have made it more difficult for people. In fact, black America is worse off under the Obama administration than it was before he arrived. He has continued to push us further and further down the track of saying it's just that we haven't done it enough. We've, we've spent almost a trillion on his stimulus plan. We did a near government takeover of the healthcare industry. Uh, we've regulated the uh, Wall Street community. We continue to push uh, efforts to eliminate our access and availability of one of our greatest resources, natural gas and actual oil. But instead, we need to do it even more, and then we would see all of these great results. Meanwhile, you need to understand that the reason that you are not seeing the great achievements that that you should expect is white America is holding you back. Now, Claudette Colvin, many of your listeners may not know, was actually a predecessor to Rosa Parks. She, some nine months before Rosa Parks said, I'm tired, I've worked a long, hard day, I'm gonna sit where there's a seat available, and she was ultimately arrested. We as a community, black, white, and brown, came together to rally around her. But when Claudette did the same thing, we did not rally around her. She was an unwed mother. She had acted uh, in a very dramatically uh, dangerous and uh, 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 irrational way when she was first accosted by the officer. She resisted arrest. She actually was not someone that the community wanted to embrace. We have rejected that model and instead said the Rodney Kings, uh, the Trayvon Martins, all of the, the career criminals that come around in our community, that's who we're going to rally behind. And we wonder why, we are astonished why we are not finding universal acceptance for this mindset and this attitude. We need to return to the idea that exceptional behavior will be rewarded and accommodated and will be appreciated, not the predatory behavior that so many Americans, black and white, see and are afraid of. That should never get the commendation that we're seeing. And in, in fact, and in fact Horace, Freddie Gray, has an arrest record, it was arrested 18 times. Most of those arrests involve uh, the, the dealing, the selling, the distribution of narcotics. 
What went wrong? What happened these last... Absolutely, that's the case. Right. right. Yeah. So, and so what, what went when wrong, the, Horace? When the mayor... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you talk. Yeah. When the mayor makes a statement like, we need to have space so that those who need to take action are able to take action, um, she claimed she wasn't meaning that it was okay to loot and riot, and yet she gave, by all intents and purposes, a stand-down order to the police, and she delayed the implementation of the curfew, and when the governor asked uh, over the weekend, before any of the danger became apparent to everyone, whether or not she was going to rely upon uh, the National Guard, she didn't do any of those things. So today, to say... No, she never really meant to imply that she was approving this behavior. I just don't think that the evidence is there. This signal was sent very clearly that the behavior that we saw was going to be accommodated. And the victims of this are the very people who live in these communities. They suffer the most. A black mayor a black police chief, a black district attorney, and you're telling me the problem is you and a black majority police force that you're not going to trust that we can get an evaluation and an investigation wow. of what happened Horace to, Cooper. and I'm going to say it again, career criminal Freddie Gray? We have to leave it right there. You make a great point. Uh, a majority black police force, black prosecutor, black mayor, great point. Horace Cooper, Project 21, thank you for joining us.